There are just too many creepy places in America for this list to be a top 10, but these 10 destinations are all near the top of the list in terms of all in all creep factor. If you live near any of these places, you may want to take a visit and see what you've been missing. From an axe murderer's home to a witch's cave and a ghostly cemetery, you're sure to find something to send chills up your spine. Lizzie Borden Bed and Breakfast in Fall River, Massachusetts. On August the 4th, 1892, someone killed Mr. and Mrs. Borden with a hatchet as they were in their home. Mrs. Borden was found in an upstairs guest room and Mr. Borden was found downstairs on the sofa. The accused was Lizzie Borden, the daughter of Mr. Borden and stepdaughter to Mrs. Borden. Despite her arrest, she was acquitted of the murders and died in 1927, still being labeled a murderer by many. Paranormal recordings turned up some creepy findings. If you think you could do it, find out for yourself what the experience is like by staying there overnight. Bell Witch Cave Adams, Tennessee. John Bell and his family moved to Robeson County in 1804. In the late summer of 1817, something would happen that would change their lives forever. Some members of the family began seeing strange-looking animals around the property. Then, late at night, they started hearing knocking sounds on the doors and outer walls of the house. Later, sounds are being heard in the house. Sounds of a rat gnawing on a bedpost, chains being dragged through the house, stones being dropped on the wooden floors, then gulping and choking sounds. When asked who or what it was, it gave different identities. It once stated that it was Kate Batts. This is what many people believed, and from then on, the unforeseen force was called Kate and the Bell's Witch. Her goal was the death of John Bell, although no reason was given by Kate. In 1820, John Bell died, and Kate was suspected of poisoning him. Villisca Axe Murder House in Villisca, Iowa On June 10, 1912, an intruder with an axe killed eight people as they slept in a house in the small town of Villisca, Iowa. The victims were a husband and wife along with their four children. Two other young children who were visiting at the time were also among the dead. The murderer is unknown and was never caught. Some swear that this house is haunted by ghosts after seeing strange visions and hearing odd noises. If you're willing to find out, you can stay at this house overnight. Book early for overnight tours. Available days tend to get filled fast. Should spending the night be too much to handle, there are daytime tours as well. The Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado. Staff who work in the kitchen next to the ballroom after hours say they have heard a party going on when the room was empty. In one guest room, people claim to have seen a man standing over the bed and running into the cupboard. It is further claimed that this same apparition is responsible for stealing jewelry, watches, and luggage that has gone missing. Some others reported that they have seen ghosts in their rooms in the middle of the night, just standing there and then disappearing. Sometimes people in the lobby can hear the piano playing from the ballroom. When workers check to see what's going on, there would be nobody sitting in front of the piano. The historic ghost tour points out creepy and ghostly experiences that have taken place at the hotel. Although the tours are open to the public, reservations are required ahead of time. If you stay at the hotel, you may want to sleep with one eye open in case you get an unexpected ghostly visitor. Stephen King got the idea for The Shining after staying in the almost empty hotel on the night before it closed for an extended period. Waverly Hill Sanatorium in Louisville, Kentucky. The building once held hundreds of tuberculosis patients. It closed in 1961 to be renovated. It opened in 1962 as a geriatric center and then finally closed in 1980. Rumor has it that there is an incredible amount of paranormal activity that goes on at this location. They have several types of tours ranging from a couple of hours to a full night. Some urban legends claim that 63,000 deaths occurred at the sanatorium. According to Assistant Medical Director Dr. J. Frank W. Stewart, the highest number of deaths in a single year at Waverly Hills was 152. Some independent researchers have suggested that 162 people died at Waverly Hills in 1945, so the highest total number of deaths possible over 50 years was approximately 8,212. Sorrel Weed House in Savannah, Georgia The Sorrel Weed House has a reputation for being one of the most haunted buildings in Savannah. People claim to see figures in the windows and to hear disembodied voices inside the house. The connecting garage house behind the main house was said to have housed a female African-American slave who was murdered by a member of the family. The beautiful house was completed in 1840 for Francis Sorrell. Due to its history, 
Cemetery, it was named as a state landmark in Georgia. Its present-day happenings caused it to be featured in an episode of Ghost Hunters where evidence was found that there may be more than the living in the house. The Ghost Hunters tour of the Sorrel Weed House will tell you all about the evidence was found, so keep your eyes and ears open if you pass through. Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California For 38 years, starting in 1884, this architectural wonder was not constructed as a result of need. It was built under the orders of Sarah L. Winchester because, as rumors say, she believed spirits were giving her building instructions. Mrs. Winchester was the wife of rifle manufacturer William Winchester. After her husband and daughter's deaths, rumors say that Mrs. Winchester ordered the building of the house because she believed she was cursed by the spirits of those whose deaths were the result of the Winchester rifle. She believed that they would make her death happen if she did not continuously build a home for them. What was once an eight-room house was turned into a massive 160-room mansion. The construction took place day and night, all week and all year, until her death in 1922. Stairs led to the ceiling and doors led to nothing. It is said that ghosts, including Sarah herself, haunt the house. While the reasoning behind the constant building is not known for sure, what is for sure is that the house is unlike any other house you've been to. Take a public flashlight door on Halloween to see if you can have your own ghostly experience. Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania You do not walk into an 11-acre abandoned penitentiary if you want to feel warm and fuzzy. The most sought-after Halloween tour, appropriately titled Terror Behind the Walls, takes place at night and does not discuss the history of the prison. The main objective of the night tour is simply to scare you senseless. The informational tours about its sordid history take place during daylight hours, which are undoubtedly still creepy as you walk around the facility that opened in 1829. Keep your eyes open for ghosts which are said to walk the abandoned halls. If you feel a hand on you, do not be surprised if there is no one there when you turn around. Listen for noises of the living and maybe the dead which can catch you off guard no matter where in the facility you are. Before you enter, make sure you sign the waiver which is necessary to take the tour. The Myrtles Plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana There are a variety of legends surrounding the Myrtles. The house is reportedly built over an Indian burial ground and the ghost of a young Indian woman has been reported and during the Civil War the house was ransacked by Union soldiers and legend claims that three were killed in the house. Supposedly, there is a bloodstain in the doorway, roughly the size of a human body that just won't come clean. Other legends say that cleaners have been unable to push their mop or broom into that space. This 200-plus-year-old plantation is incredibly beautiful and, some may say, quite haunted. In addition to the beauty of the location, the stories of love and death that occurred at the plantation are enough to create a draw to the plantation. When you mix in the numerous stories of ghostly encounters and unexplainable photographs, it creates quite the creepy locale. There are historic tours and mystery tours available to Myrtle's Plantation. Bachelors Grove Cemetery Located in the southwest suburbs of Chicago, Illinois, this cemetery exists peacefully in the Rubio Woods. At first glance, it looks like a small, unimportant cemetery. The chain-link fence, which once protected it from outsiders, is broken, a big hole marring the protective metal. The cemetery itself is broken down, suffering from years of vandalism and trespassing. Some gravestones are dismantled. Although this sounds like an innocent, unimportant cemetery, its past is shrouded in despair and death. A white, uninhabited pond exists in the northwest corner of the cemetery. Mob bosses used it as a dumping ground for their victims in the early 1900s. They officially stopped burying the dead in the 1960s. Since that time, people have reported many sightings, making Bachelors Grove the most haunted cemetery in the United States. Many of these sightings have occurred near the pond. Sightings include a ghost called the White Lady. Clad in white, she roams the graves looking for her lost baby. Other sightings include a two-headed man and a ghost house. Bachelor's Grove is truly the spookiest haunting grounds in the United States. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. If you enjoyed this video, I've got a whole channel devoted to geography and location-based stuff. It's called Geographics. I'm going to link to that below. And thank you for watching.